In recent years, suspicions of Rwanda's backing of rebel factions in the Democratic Republic of Congo DRC, have stirred controversy and global concern. This accusation has sparked debates about underlying motives, revealing a complex mix of geopolitical interests, historical tensions, and regional power struggles. The DRC, known for its vast resources, has long grappled with conflict and instability. Among the various armed groups, the M23 rebels have notably caused a major crisis in the eastern region. Allegations of external backing, frequently pointing to Rwanda, have accompanied the emergence of groups like M23. So why, it is said, does Rwanda back rebel groups in its neighbor, the Democratic Republic of the Congo? The intricate interaction of regional power dynamics, historical grievances, and economic interests holds the key to the solution. Hello and welcome to my channel and thanks for watching. In this video we'll be looking at the shocking reasons why Rwanda might be sponsoring the DRC's rebel militias. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel for more updates. Let's dive in. After ethnic violence and mass murder devastated Rwanda in 1994, the country became involved in the Democratic Republic of the Congo DRC. Rwanda intervened in neighboring countries, including the Democratic Republic of the Congo, in the years that followed in an effort to bolster its influence in the area and defend its borders from alleged enemies. How the crisis began The current crisis began in November 2021, when the mostly inactive March 23 movement, M23, launched sudden attacks on military positions held by the armed forces of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, FARDC, in Chanzu and Runyani villages, North Kivu province. This coincided with Uganda's deployment to pursue the Allied Democratic Forces, ADF, which had targeted Uganda with suicide bomb attacks. By March 2022, and 23 controlled parts of Rutshuru territory, seizing the Rumangabo military base in May and advancing towards Goma and Giseni in Rwanda. In June, another M23 faction captured Bonagana, forcing Congolese soldiers into Uganda. Despite a decade of dormancy, M23's resurgence surprised many. In 2013, defeats led fighters to flee to Rwanda and Uganda, with some eventually surrendering to Ugandan forces. The DRC blames Rwanda for supporting M23, implicating Rwanda in previous UN reports. M23, dominated by Congolese Tutsis, has ties to the Rwanda Patriotic Front, linked to Rwanda and Uganda's historical involvement in Congolese rebellions. The situation escalated in June 2022, when Uganda and Rwanda accused each other of supporting M23. To restore stability, the East African community proposed deploying a regional force led by Kenya. How did the M23 rebels resurface? The long-running rivalry between Uganda and Rwanda has a major impact on the ongoing conflict in the Democratic Republic of the Congo DRC, and the larger Great Lakes area. This competition is the result of both recent and historical factors. Long term, there is a great deal of mistrust between the Democratic Republic of the Congo DRC, and its neighbors, especially Rwanda, Uganda, and Burundi, as well as between these neighboring states. Claude Gatebuke asserts that despite the deployment of a regional force, a lesson from previous interventions resolving the M23 issue effectively requires addressing the underlying tensions between Rwanda and Uganda. Kwezi Mikabiza highlights that the factions of M23 fighters who retreated to Rwanda and Uganda maintain hostility towards each other, serving as convenient pawns for the two regional adversaries engaged in numerous proxy conflicts for control over areas rich in minerals like gold, coltan, tantalum, and diamonds, especially in North Kivu. Mikabiza points out that Uganda and Rwanda have historically supported rival factions in Congo since their military clashes in Kisangani in the late 1990s, indicating a recurring pattern where their contest for dominance coincides with increased violence in eastern DRC. Jason Stearns concurs with the assessment that Uganda and Rwanda are reigniting proxy warfare in Congo. In addition to permitting Ugandan troops to operate in North Kivu, 
DRC President Shizukiti sanctioned a plan in 2021 to construct roads linking the two countries. The timing of military operations and road construction appears interconnected, with the UPDF launching attacks against the ADF shortly before road construction commenced. The Memorandum of Understanding MOU, on road construction, being part of the military agreement between the two nations, remains classified and inaccessible for public scrutiny, signed by the military chiefs of staff, rather than the ministries of finance or planning. The MOU grants the UPDF the authority to safeguard the road projects, personnel, and equipment, with Uganda providing full funding, 40% from its budget and the remainder from DOT services, the selected Ugandan construction firm. The deployment of Ugandan forces into North Kivu and the construction of a Ugandan-financed road network, protected by the UPDF and extending to Goma near Rwanda's border, were viewed as hostile acts by Kigali. Rwandan President Kagame, in a parliamentary address in February 2022, warned of the serious threats from North Kivu, suggesting the possibility of Rwandan intervention without DRC approval, emphasizing the imperative of taking necessary actions, with or without consent. What part do commercial and economic interests play? The comeback of M23 is also closely related to entwined business and financial interests. According to Kwasi Mikabiza, Rwanda and Uganda's security concerns in the Congo can be justified, but their significant financial interests, particularly in extractive industries, heighten their rivalry. This lucrative mining region, which stretches from Bunagana along the Ugandan border through Kenya Bayonga to Goma on the Rwandan border, contains some of the world's largest deposits of coltan, an essential component of almost all electronic devices. In addition, the Democratic Republic of Congo is the world's leading producer of cobalt, an essential element in batteries for electric vehicles that is in great demand right now. There is substantial evidence indicating that rebel factions supported by Uganda and Rwanda, including M23, exert control over crucial yet informal supply chains originating from mines in the Kivis and extending into the two countries. These insurgents utilize proceeds from the trafficking of minerals like gold, diamonds, and coltan to finance weapon purchases, recruit and supervise artisanal miners, and bribe corrupt Congolese customs and border officials as well as military and police personnel. The illicit operations involving these minerals have long been entangled with conflict, rebels, and foreign sponsors, plaguing Congo for decades. A significant challenge lies in the fact that Uganda, Rwanda, and Burundi export commodities they do not produce, indicating extensive smuggling, as highlighted by successive UN investigations. In February 2022, the International Court of Justice mandated Uganda to compensate the DRC with $325 million for its involvement in conflicts between 1998 and 2003, which included civilian deaths in the Ituri region, support for rebel factions, and the plundering of gold, diamonds, and timber. Rwanda has also faced repeated accusations in UN reports of benefiting from minerals smuggled from the DRC to finance rebel groups and enhance its own exports. Both countries deny these allegations, yet evidence sometimes surfaces in their export revenues. For instance, gold has become Uganda's primary export, with a significant portion originating from the DRC. Similarly, Although officially, the DRC accounted for 40% of global coltan production in 2019, substantial quantities reportedly flowed into Rwanda, exported from there. This trend is mirrored in neighboring countries. Despite having limited known deposits themselves, Rwanda, Uganda, and Burundi rank 3rd, 9th, and 11th, respectively, in coltan exports. According to UN reports, most of the coltan trafficked originates in the Democratic Republic of the Congo DRC, but a significant amount is diverted to Uganda through Bunagana and Rukshiru in North Kivu, and some is routed to Burundi through Uvira in South Kivu. Overall, the evidence points to the eastern DRC neighbors, particularly Rwanda and Uganda, as regional rivals who want sole control over mining operations in the Kivis, increasing the risk of proxy violence. Rwanda is very much implicates. Presidents Kagame and Shizukiti signed a deal in June 2021 that called for dither 
a business suspected of having strong links to the Rwandan military, to process the gold produced by Sakima in order to cut off revenue to armed groups from this sector. This action put Rwanda in a strategic position to manage the whole gold supply chain, which reportedly infuriated Kampala. However, the DRC's accusations that Rwanda was aiding in the revival of M23 led to the agreement being suspended in early June 2022. According to Ugandan officials, after Rwanda's business endeavors in the DRC encountered difficulties, it became even more determined to bring M23 back to life. During the M23 incursion in Bunagana on March 23, 2022, Ugandan troops intervened to safeguard the assets and personnel of DOT services. According to the narrative in Kampala, the attack was orchestrated by the Rwandan faction of N23 as part of Rwanda's scheme to disrupt Uganda's economic activities in the DRC. Conversely, the narrative in Kigali suggests that the attack was carried out by M23 elements under Ugandan control, aimed at capturing the border town critical to DOT services operations. These mutual accusations highlight the significant role of financial and economic interests in the resurgence of M23, which thrives on the Uganda-Rwanda rivalry. More tensions exist between DRC and Rwanda. In June 2022, Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo DRC, exchanged accusations of firing rockets across their shared border. The DRC authorities further claimed that Rwanda had deployed hundreds of disguised soldiers onto Congolese territory. Following an alleged incident involving a Congolese soldier shot dead on Rwandan soil by Rwandan border guards, the DRC closed its border with Rwanda on June 17. Claude Gate Buke warns that without a robust confidence-building process between the two nations, the risk of a broader interstate conflict is high, potentially drawing in Uganda and possibly Burundi in support of the DRC. Rwanda and Uganda were placed on high war alert as recently as 2019. Despite their three-year border closure that ended in January 2022, tensions still exist, made worse by Uganda's recent actions in the DRC. But instead of going to war directly, it appears that the two nations have gone back to waging proxy conflicts. This implies that until these fundamental disagreements are settled, there may be challenges in the way of the region's overall disarmament efforts, especially with regard to organizations like M23. Interstate conflict is also more likely to occur when disarmament attempts fail. The deadline set in October 2017 by the signatory countries and guarantor institutions to repatriate ex-combatants from groups like the Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Rwanda FDLR, and M23 passed without significant action. Gatebuke describes this disarmament process as a monumental failure, with repercussions now evident. Few of the M23 fighters who fled to Uganda and Rwanda in 2013 have returned to the DRC. Those who renounced rebellion were granted blanket amnesties under the terms of the 2013 peace agreement between the government of the Democratic Republic of the Congo and M23 unless they were accused of war crimes. And 23 leaders, however, frequently charge that the DRC government is not adhering to this agreement. There are conjectures that the recent attacks by M23 could be an attempt to exert pressure on the Chiskidi government to attend to their complaints. 